Today I want to talk about three common pond problems and how you can fix them quickly. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel and website is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe. So possibly the most common problem that annoys pond owners is green water. I mean, what's the point of having a pond if you can't see the fish? Often the cause is inadequate biological filtration. In simple terms, that means a lack of good bacteria and organisms. Or sometimes it's just the case of being a brand new pond. If you have green water and the pond is new, patience is your best friend. The bacteria and organisms will colonise the pond and start purifying the water. If you have no patience, adding a flocculant can help clump this single celled algae together so it gets stuck in the filter sponges. There's many different products, they all work pretty much the same, so just select the one that makes the most economic sense to you. Just make sure it's safe for use in ponds and you can't go wrong. I'll link a few popular choices down in the description. Now if the pond isn't new and you've got green water, you do have a couple of options. One is increase the biological filtration. This is providing more area for beneficial bacteria and organisms to live on. Adding a stream with rocks can help as these add surface area that are wet and they're available for the organism and bacteria to colonise. You should also look to increase the size of your filter. One of my favourite ways to supercharge your biological filter is by creating a bog filter. I've never had green water in any of my ponds running a bog. I do have quite a few videos talking about the benefits of bog filters and how to create all different sizes of them. Bogs are cheap and easy to make and require very little maintenance. So if a bog filter does interest you, be sure to check out those videos. I'll put a link down in the description. If you think adding more filtration is too hard, your next best option is a UV light. I personally have never used one on my own ponds as I always prefer the natural route, but UV lights do work. Water is passed through the UV filter. The UV light splits apart the single celled algae, killing it. Some pond filters that you buy off the shelf will come with them already installed. For a UV light to be successful, it's important that the right amount of flow passes through the UV light. So always match it with the volume of water that you're pumping. The next common problem or issue is string algae. Algae is natural and helps break down nutrients and organic materials within the pond, but it is a problem if it begins to dominate the ecosystem. The accepted rule of thumb is anything under three inches long is no problem, longer than that and it's time to look for solutions. But again, if the pond is new, this is very natural to have an excessive amount of string algae. Once the bacteria and other organisms begin consuming some of the nutrients, the outbreak will settle down. I should mention a UV light is useless against this type of algae, so don't try that. A common solution people will talk about is to add lots of plants to outcompete the algae. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on the amount of nutrient that is available and how well the plants that you put in the pond can access that. I was recently recommended a product called Diatomix. It's actually pretty amazing. It works by promoting the growth of diatomes, which are a food source for zooplankton. Zooplankton are an essential part of the pond food chain and are consumed by young fish and other small critters. And these are then consumed by larger fish and larger critters. In simple terms, what is happening is nutrients within the pond that algae would normally feed on are being consumed by tiny animals and then larger animals. 
So as the nutrients are getting locked up, <laughs> the animals or the fish within the pond are getting bigger and bigger and converting those nutrients into their body weight. <laughs> it's really very simple, but it's pretty cool. Their motto is a biological solution to a biological problem. So when my dream pond got quite a lot of algae growth, I decided to give it a go. It was pretty amazing. Within two weeks, there was almost zero string algae. Now I did also add some shrimp at the same time, but I only put 50 shrimp in a massive pond and only into one of the bog filters. Yet right now the entire pond is practically algae free. Here's the exact same spot a few weeks after starting to dose the pond with diatomics. I should say, I don't receive any kickbacks and this is not sponsored. Um, it just works and I want people to know about it. Best of all, it's very cheap and you don't use much at all. So some of the more traditional methods people use are barley straw, copper ionizers or copper algicides. These are only going to mask the problem of the nutrients and so the problem's going to continue to reappear. I have used copper in the past and I'll never go back. It kills small organisms like shrimp and it isn't recommended for use with Australian native fish. So for those of you that don't have access to diatomics because you're not in Australia, uh, I do think they also supply New Zealand though. But you could try new algae it also uses silica to grow diatomes and outcompete the string algae for nutrients. So basically the same thing in a different package. Anyway, I'll put a link to both of those products down in the description. And the last common problem you're probably going to experience is cloudy or muddy pond water. Again, very common just after building a pond in a new pond or even after heavy rain or really windy conditions when lots of sediment or dust has found its way into the pond. <laughs> Clay particles are little buggers in that they won't naturally clump together. They're repulsed away from each other kind of like magnets when you try and put the same poles together. This means that like the single celled algae, they're able to pass straight through the filters without being captured. <laughs> That's right, they're that small. So again here, you'd use a flocculant as your best solution. It forces those particles to clump together and now they can be captured by the filters. So I like to keep a flocculant on hand always. And now of course my new best friend, the di Diatomix. Uh, these two with a good quality biological filter like a bog and you don't need to waste money on any other products. At least not for any water clarity issues, <laughs> possibly still for <laughs> if you have problems with your fish. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if it has, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.